do you do? My name's Roger Carswell, I come from Yorkshire, and it really is a privilege to be able to share with you something I think is very, very special. We're living in an age, aren't we, where we're bombarded with atheistic ideas, the, the notion that there is no God, no accountability, no judgment, we, we've become accustomed to. And yet I believe the God who is has revealed himself to us. He's done it in many ways. He's done it through the wonder of creation, just the, the placing of planet Earth in space. If it was just a little bit in a different sort of orbit, we would either freeze or, or, or melt to death. Uh, the, the wonder of the, the beauty of creation, the flowers, the trees, the birds, e even the eye focusing and refocusing thousands of times in a day without us even thinking about it. But God has revealed himself more specifically. There's a sense of right and wrong within us all, a conscience. And even more specifically through the written word, the Bible, and the living word, Jesus Christ. And when we look at the Bible and Jesus we see that God is wanting to communicate certain specific things to us. He wants us to know first who he is and then who we are. And he wants us to know what he has done and what we must do. And that's really what I, I want us to think about for the next few minutes. So God hasn't left us in the lurch. We're not in the dark as to who he is. He's made himself known. Now, if that is true, and there's a potential of actually coming to know not just about God, but to know God himself, then that is tremendous. So if God has revealed himself to us, what does he want us to know about himself? Well, clearly in the Bible, it's absolutely full of God. Uh, he, he never had a beginning. He, he's there before the beginning, if you want, and after the end, he's eternal. And then the Bible teaches very clearly that there is just one God, but he's in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We, we call him the Trinity, the Holy Trinity. We, we know as well that God knows all things. He's omniscient. He can do anything. He's omnipotent. He's everywhere. He's omnipresent. He never changes we know too that God is absolutely pure and clean. Of course, the Bible word is holy. We know that God as well is just. So there's no miscarriage of justice at all with, with him. And, and, and we know that God is infinitely loving, eternally loving. He's patient. He knows all about us and yet still he loves us, loves us individually, cares for us individually. We know that God has a plan for the world that he created. He knows about how it began. He'll know when it'll end. He knows about the new heaven and the new earth. He, of course, he's Lord of heaven and earth. And he's the one who created hell as well. And yet his desire is that nobody should be lost, but that all should come to know him. This is our God. And this God we can know in a very personal way. So when the hymn writer wrote long ago, what a friend we have in Jesus, that's a tremendous truth, that the God whom heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain, this God was big enough to become small, be born and laid in a manger, eventually go to a cross and die, and by his Holy Spirit live within us and go before us and beside us and behind us and above us and below us and even abide within us. A God who's infinite and eternal and yet humbles himself to live within the likes of people like you and me. You know, God has not only revealed to us knowledge about who he is, but he wants us to know who we are. I don't know whether you ever look in a mirror in the morning and think, what a marvellous sight. But, you know, we all are fantastic pieces of creation. We really are. And, um, and yet, what does it mean to be human? Did we exist before we were born? Do we exist after we die? Well, actually, again, the Bible makes it very clear that we were made in God's image. We are tripartite beings. We have a body. You know, I look after my body. I feed it. I sleep it. I'm supposed to exercise it. I don't do very much of that. But, but I'm more than a body. I have a soul, my personality, my character. I also have a spirit, that side of me, which was created to know and worship and appreciate and enjoy God. Listen to what the Bible says about that. 
May your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's interesting that God, in his word, the Bible, says the spirit comes first, then the soul, then the body. We put it the other way around. We were made to have a relationship with God that is real and intimate, and yet that relationship has been severed. It's been cut off. Why? We've dared to defy God. We've dared to, as it were, shake our fist in his face and say, God, we do not want you to rule over us. We've, well, the Bible puts it, we've sinned. We've, we've broken God's commandments. We've fallen short of the way in which he made us, and we've rebelled against, against him. So actually, we're cut off, and we are really under a cloud of condemnation. Here we are with an eternal existence. Yes, the body might go to the ground, but the real you and me, our soul, our spirit, will live on either with God forever in heaven or lost forever in hell. And yet God loves us. And God has reached out to rescue us. That is fantastic. Yes, I, 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 I may be just one tiny little part of creation compared with the vastness of space. Yet God, the creator, became like us, his creation, and he came so that he might, well, to put it his way, I came to seek and to save those who are lost. There's something magnificent about every human being. There really is. Everyone is precious. Everyone is given life by God. But he wants us to have eternal life, spiritual life, a relationship with him. And that brings us on to the next thing that God has told us. He's told us what he has done.